folks are out there and they're hearing, then I get more out of it than when I'm actually reading. Then I feel it is more like Shravanam Kirtana. I'm speaking and I'm also I'm also hearing. So I and and it, and it actually is I I really feel so much when I'm reading Chaitanya Charitamrita that I'm I'm familiar with what I'm reading but at the same time it's like I've never heard it before. It's like I'm hearing it fresh. And, I'll, and so many times I'll be hearing and I'll say, oh, that is a fact that I never captured before, or that's something that I never realized before. And I, maybe I've read that 50 times, but I can't, I, I'm thinking, I have, not, I have not considered that. And then I'm thinking that, oh, that's something that I want to remember. But of course I don't remember many, but somehow or other I think it is stored in my mind. And then sometimes when I'm not so, not even aware of that, then it will come out, certain things. And, you know, there's, there are so many things like that. And, I feel that it's like that also when we hear from our acharyas, that they will tell us things. And maybe at the present moment when I'm hearing, I don't have the maturity or the development to understand what they're saying. But even though I may not be conscious of it, at a later time, it will come up again. It will. And that is a very good thing because we always hear when Mahaprabhu says, Cheto Darpanam Marjanam Bhava Mahadabhagni Nirvapanam. And Cheto Darpanam, that mirror of my consciousness, is covered with so much dust, but that is not good things. And so many things are coming up in my mind from who knows where. Who knows where these things and thoughts are coming up into my mind. And many times what goes through my mind I'm feeling is very embarrassing. I'm very much embarrassed to think certain thoughts that why, why am I thinking like that? You know, and the, then I understand that my mind is, is not actually beneficial to me. My mind is not something that is benefiting me, you know. So maybe the Buddhists, they say that you have to stop the activities of your mind. But that is impossible. You cannot stop the activities of your mind. Maybe by this, what Maharaj here was talking about in his plays yesterday, Maybe you can commit some kind of <clears throat> mental suicide, or you're thinking that you can commit some kind of we mental su suicide by attaining the level of nirvana or something like that. But that is that is not re that is not real reality, and that is just we can say negation of the negative. Negation of you could say negative negation of the negative. Is you could think is grammatically you would think is positive, like I do not not want to go, meaning I want to go, but you know maybe maybe it is one is thinking that negation of the negative is something positive, but it actually is not. It just means some uh, abeyance that you know. Like I heard one example that if if a man is beating himself with a stick and he's experiencing pain, he may think that when that beating, either by himself or someone else, when that beating with a stick stops, he might think, someone might think, oh, this is pleasure, that now I'm not being beat anymore. 
or like the example of the man that's submerged in water and he can't breathe but then he's brought up above the level of the water for a few seconds where he can gasp a few breaths. And that used to be a form of punishment. Someone was strapped into a chair, lowered into the water, couldn't breathe for so long, you know. Uh, and, and then they would, the king, you know, some kind of punishment by, then they be raised above the le level of the water and could breathe, you know, it was some kind of maybe medieval punishment, but now maybe, maybe refined by my country, I don't know, under new term, waterboarding. But the example we've read about from ancient times, but that's not something positive, just that, you know, I can't, I'm about to drown and I'm being able to get a few breaths, but then I'm submerged in the water again. But that's what's happening with the material nature and my mind, you know, if I'm thinking that I will cancel and stop all the activities of my mind, such as with Mayavad impersonalism or Buddhism with its nirvana conception, you know, that is, that is, that is not something positive. That is not what we will call well-being or pleasure. You know, we're, we're looking, that's why Bhagavad Gita says that you, when you can experience, uh, you know, a higher taste, then you can um, automatically give up the lower taste. If you're eating something that's, you know, that best that you can get is something terrible. Then somebody gives you some nice prasadam. That was my experience when I came in contact with the devotee. Someone's giving me some nice prasadam, then I'm thinking, this is very good. And what I thought before was enjoyable, that is not good. That was, that was untasteful, not tasty. But this is actually some, something, something tasty. That's why, I mean, so many times we used to hear that Gaudiya Vaishnavism heard that it is kitchen religion in the sense that at any given program we have, there may be 50 people out here and there might be 20 people in the kitchen. I don't know it. There's always so many persons there and they're preparing for the Lord. And this is a natural thing that when they're preparing something for the Lord, you'll see that individually they would not cook that well for themselves. If they were cooking for themselves, they wouldn't go through so much endeavor. They wouldn't go through so much difficulty to make some lunch or to make some dinner. It would be more simple, you know. Not simple in the sense that less endeavor to make it something really special, but the devotees are have a conception that when they're cooking for the Lord, it has to be very nice. But my, my point is about the activities of my mind. You know, we're thinking that we can't get good instruction from our mind, but actually it is the opposite. Our mind has to be instructed. We have to find some way of instructing our mind. If we don't instruct our mind, we will go to ruin, you know. There is a saying, this, there is a saying that the road to hell is paved with good intentions. So we see many people have good intentions. Many people say that I am my own guru. Now, conception we also heard yesterday. I'm my own guru. I don't need a guru, you know. I one time, you know, part the expression, but one time I was on, I was on a grand jury, and in, in California, I had to. Everyone sometimes has to serve jury duty, and I had to be on this grand jury, and you know the grand jury is hearing some evidence, but the person who is going to be indicted at a grand jury has no, the person is not, 
given any chance to make any defense because it's just to be, it's just a di going on between what the grand jury is deciding whether the person will go to trial, whether the po person will be indicted. You know, but always at the grand jury is what they call, I don't know what they say in England, but they would say the, uh, the, dis the district attorney, which means the prosecutor, he's there. But there's no, there's no barristers, there's no lawyers from the other side. And they're deciding whether the person will be indicted. So they have this expression, it's not so nice, but it says a good district attorney or a good prosecutor could convict a ham sandwich. That's their expression. You know, it doesn't matter if it's an in on, inanimate object, but that the district attorney could convict that person and bring them to trial. So when a person says, I'll be my own guru, it's like saying that you'll be your own lawyer. If you're up against a district attorney or a prosecutor, they're very expert. And someone who says that they, they can represent themselves it is said that if someone wants to be their own lawyer, they have a fool for a client. That is the expression. <laughs> and I know one person, you know, like I know all kinds of people. I know one person, he did something wrong. So the prosecutor said, we will give you some plea bargain and you can go to jail for, I think it was like three years if you accept. But that person said, no, I will defend myself. And he studied law, he read from books and a lot, studied law and everything. He didn't take the plea, plea bargain, would have gone to jail for three years. But he didn't accept, he represented himself. The result was he was sentenced to 15 years. You know, three, three years, you could say, naturally somebody doesn't want to take that kind of a deal with a district attorney, you know. But he'd rather represent himself. So the result was instead of taking a deal of three years, which is long time, he was sentenced to 15 years. So that saying exists that a person who wants to represent himself against a prosecutor in court, a person who wants to represent himself has a fool for a client, then how much worse is it in spiritual life where somebody, we're not up against a prosecutor, but we are certainly, you know, going to uh, receive the reactions for our previous activities we're in the cycle of karma. As one time I heard Govindamara say to one devotee who called him and told him of his condition. And Srila Govindamara, you know, I heard the conversation, I took it very personally also. Srila Govinda said to that person, Maharaj, we are all getting our karma full. He said like that. I mean, when my own Gurudev tells me, we are all getting our karma full, then just imagine, I am getting the results of my activities. But I'm thinking because I'm under the protection of Gurudev, I'm not, I'm not worried. We were in the plane with Gurudev, Russia, the plane seemed like it was going to crash. Many passengers were upset. I was. I was unaffected, actually. It's almost jovial, because I'm thinking I'm in a plane with Gurudev, nothing, but nothing, nothing is going to happen. Now, maybe I'm very naive, and I'm thinking like that, but if something were to happen, I'm still with Gurudev, so I'm not too worried about the situation, you know, you know. The plane crashes, and you're flat. That's, you know, that's the least of my worries, you know. Just like I remember one devotee told me, after I'd left Iskod, he told me, one devotee, if you, 
if you were went, went to the spiritual world and Srila Sridhar Maharaj was in one room and Srila Prabhupada was in another room, which room would you go into? <laughs> you, know, you know, this was his question. He said, he said this was his question. I, he was one of the Ma, Maharaj from his gun. I said, Maharaj, I have bigger problems than that. <laughs> <laughs> You're telling me I'm in the spiritual world and Prabhupada's in one room and Srila Sridhar Maharaj is in the other room. What room would I go to? I said, Maharaj, I have much bigger problems than that. Really. Really much more severe problems than that. You know. Like, I don't know if I'm getting to either room, you know, first of all. But, you know, Srila Govinda Maharaj heard that and said, you know, I would go into the room of Prabhupada first. That's what Govinda Maharaj said. Because he will be more lenient. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, and then that conversation continued, and he said, and he said, uh, that person said, "Well, wh why don't you come back?" And I said, "I was excommunicated." And then he says, "That doesn't matter. The deities won't take that into account. You can come back." And he kept on saying more and more. Come, why don't you come back? And I said, all right, I will ask Govinda Maharaj. That's what I told him. And then he said, oh, you're saying you're not a street dog, that you have a master. That's what he told me. You're, not, you're telling me you're not a street dog, you have a master. And I said, that's exactly what I'm telling you. You know, now that you ask me, it's exactly what I'm telling you. I'm not a street dog. I have a master. You know. So that's my feeling. I I have a master, you know. You know, like my 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 master will is more merciful and a better well wisher of me than I am myself. And Srila Sridhar Mars gave this story, he said he said, we are all minor souls, minor in the sense of underage, you know, so uh, what's the, the name of that uh, astrologer, you know, Mahaprabhu talks of the astrologer telling you where to dig, do you know his name, Sarvagya, Sarvagya, he knows everything, past, present, and future, Sarvagya. But Sarvagya tells the conditioned soul that you have great wealth, but you don't know where to look for it. You have this great wealth, so you don't know, but you don't know how to look where to look for it. So we all have great wealth, but because in the example of Srila Sridhar Maharaj, he says we are, we are minor souls, and we've got, we have great wealth, but we are too young to be able to properly utilize that wealth. So some administrators are appointed to help us as we are minor souls. Then the, uh, some administrators are appointed to take care of our wealth. And those administrators are our mind and our, and our intelligence. They are our administrators. But they are very corrupt and crooked administrators. And they are saying, everything is for you. Everything is for you. Everything is for you. But it's a lie. They are just taking the wealth and squandering it for their own purposes. What will, you know, under their dictamen, Dictamens, we are squandering our life and our property because of these bad, corrupt, you know, nefarious administrators, our mind and intelligence. So then Srila Sridhar says, then the solution will be if a major soul, if a major soul will, you know, take control of our property, then everything will be employed for the service of the Lord. The major so is, of course, our spiritual master, the Acharya. He is the person who will help us to properly 
utilize what are our own resources. So that I'm saying, and you know, you want, you know, you want it. You want to chant the holy name because ultimately that's what we're about, right? We want to all, you know, receive the holy name, chant the holy name. Maharaj today wants to take the devotees and go on Harinam Sankirtan, right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> so that is, you know, we all want to do that. Then where you, where you will get the holy name? Will you go into a bead shop? Oh, we have glass beads. We do you have Japa beads? Oh, yes, we have some all the way from... Ne all the, we have Rudraksha beads. We have Japa beads. We have beads all the way from Nepal. And we have beads from India. And these are neem beads. And we also have Tulsi beads. What, do you, what would you like? You want to buy that? Ah, uh, yeah, I'd like some Tulsi beads. Then... I, then then, then I'll take the Tulsi beads home and I'll chant on them. But the slight difficulty is I haven't received the holy name. So what will I chant on those beads? I don't, haven't received the holy name from Gurudev, so what will I chant on those beads? Well, <coughs> I've heard a facsimile of the holy name. I heard it on a record or a recording. I heard heard a kirtan once. But when we say diksha, usually we're referring, you know, first, second initiation, Gayatri, that's you know, diksha, diksha guru, but we also say nam diksha. If for, you, first thing, it's not that you receive, you know, that your name, it's not so important that you receive your spiritual name that, oh, now you are Abhimanyu Das. You know, okay, that's a very nice name. But the real important thing is, you know, that you receive the holy name from the, from the lips of Gurudev. And he transmits, as Govinda Maharaj would say, heart to heart transmission. That's what you're really getting. All right, you're accepted into the family, you're given a, a divine name. But we see ma many Mahaprabhus, you know, followers, they had, they had different names from their, from their childhood. Their <coughs> Some of Mahaprabhus' followers were called Janadas, which is, you know, Gurudev will not give the name generally Janadas. And then somebody has the name Kalidas, Famous, you know, one for, famous person who is expert in receiving prasadam from the devotees and Mahaprabhu Kalidas. But who gave him the name Kalidas? We conclude that he had that name from birth. So he was not given, he had that name, he stayed with that name. He came and beca became part of Mahaprabhu's, you know, tree, everything. But really, what one is receiving is the, you know, the, the Shuddha Nam, the holy name. One is getting from that. That is what's transmitted from the spirit, by the spiritual master. And anyway, this, when we, so we're going out and, you know, we're not just purchasing the holy name. Although... Maybe Bhakti Vinod Thakur does talk about Nam Hatha, right? Marketplace of the holy name. But that is a spiritual purchase, a spiritual process. And who's the keeper of the Nam Hatha? Nityananda Prabhu, right? He's the keeper of the, of the holy market of the, the market of the holy name. It's Nityananda Prabhu. So that way you can get the holy name but not by just going into a bead shop. Otherwise, as Srila Srinamara says, you'll be firing blanks. You'll be making a sound that appears to be the holy name, but it will be like firing blanks. It'll just be some 
some loud sound, but not necessarily will you have, you know. So anyway, I'm just speaking something, you know, we're here. We're all trying to get the mercy of Gurudev, of the, of the holy name. That's what we're trying to transmit in the form of Harinam Sankirtan. So now I will ask Chagi Maharaj. He will continue with, you know, he's taking everyone out on, as he said, on Harinam Sankirtan with a resounding yes. yes. Okay. <laughs> all right. So now. Here they are. Here's everyone. They want to we'll say something to them. Dainidi Prabhu is here. Just as you mentioned, Harinam Sankirtan, and <laughs> Dainidi Prabhu arrives. <laughs> All right. Well, does anyone have a question for Maharaj? Subject they'd like to hear about? I have one. Dianidi. You can come in. Come in, Minister. Well, you come in that way, and then later you're another way. <laughs> <Come in. laughs> if I am change ready when the artist starts to speak, huh? As if I go up and change now, it will be better. When the artist starts, when the children are ready. Okay. <laughs> so I'll be just a few minutes. That's just a suggestion. You've not done the art yet? No. Oh, okay. I'll find this way now. So, any question for Maharaj? Any subject to discuss? I was contemplating in this uh, few days. Previously, like maybe <coughs> two or three generations before, like the uh, well, spiritual master may have, uh, they have the disciples, like they can count on the fingers, for example, 10 or 15 disciples, uh, and then they are created like they are really on that path. Like, you know, they have that uh, force, they have that. Uh, the enlightenment. But now, like uh, many, many disciples, many people are there. So, does that have any effect on the quality? The quality of what? Uh, for example, uh, like the quality of uh, the disciples or the enlightenment that they have got, the knowledge they have got, if it's properly transmitted. Because before, like, Maybe 10, 12, 20 disciples, uh, one person, maybe one disciple, but you know, it's properly transmitted. But, but now, maybe so many people, so many disciples. So, is it there? Like, it's not like a direct question, like, is it there? But I want to know, like, if there is a difference, or if not, like, how? Well, Srila Sridhar Maharaj said, we are interested in quality, not in quantity. So we're interested in quality. I mean, there may be, you know, there may be so many persons, you know, as I was explaining about, you know, the transmission of the holy name, that I saw, and I've always seen, that Gurudev is very generous with the distribution of the holy name. Someone comes to, a, someone comes forward and says, I want to receive the holy name. You know, unless there's something very, some obviously um, something wrong, obviously amiss, generally Gurudev is not going to begin to doubt the sincerity of the recipient. Recipient. He also expects that who is bringing this person forward, that that person is being recommended that he's a good, a, he's a good soul. So we're we're thinking like that, but. Because the distribution of the holy name is very goes on on a big scale, that means many persons are coming forward, and Gurudev is not like 
doubting somebody's sincer sincerity, not saying, oh, I don't think you're telling me the truth. It's because, as I said, before Gurudev gives someone the holy name, what are they going, they, they want to chant, but what are they going to chant if Gurudev is not giving them whole, the holy name? So Gurudev is generous in giving the holy name. Does that mean, does that mean everyone is qualified? No, not everyone. It will be a question of the sincerity of the individual person, you know. And some people may may not be qualified. We see in the history of Chaitanya Charitamrita, the the story Madhavendra Puri, the most qualified person, the beginning of the tree of Mahaprabhu, and his disciple. Ishwara Puri became the spiritual master of the Lord himself, of Mahaprabhu. But Madhavendra Puri also had um, another disciple named Ramachandra Puri, and Ramachandra Puri was very terrible. You know, every, every time he came, the, Mahaprabhu was giving him some respect, but all the devotees were in agony with that person because he was a real... Nindaka, he was a real fault finder, right? Is that the right word? Nindaka, fault finder. That was Ramachandra Puri. His, his business, like as the expression, he was a drain inspector. His business was to find fault with everybody. And so, even with a great spiritual master, you see there are some disciples that are unqualified. So just because the spiritual master only has one, two, five, six disciples, or maybe only one, it doesn't necessarily mean that that all those disciples, even though there may be only five in number, doesn't mean they're all going to be qualified. You know, in Christianity, you know, Christ had Christ had different disciples, but not all of them were qualified. You know, you know, one of them betrayed him. So, you know, why is it a reflection, a question of numbers that he had many, and therefore they cannot be, you know. So maybe among many of the, among the many, there is one person like a crown jewel. Maybe among that many disciples of Gurudev. There is one person who is especially very special. Like Srila Sridhar Maharaj had different disciples. And many of them were very nice. We know them. But Srila Govinda Maharaj, he was in a very special relationship with his spiritual master. So, you know, his position was unique. Although there may be many, there may be other disciples. And Srila Sridhar Maharaj only wanted to give sannyas when Govinda Maharaj would take sannyas. Until he took sannyas, he didn't want to give sannyas to anyone else. Because he said by Indian law it will be established, Govinda Maharaj will be the first sannyasi, and then it will be understood that he is my successor. That was his consideration. So quantity. As I said, we're interested in quality, not quantity. But there may be quantity. It doesn't matter. You know. Of course, it's, it, it is true. The spiritual master should consider his capacity. You know, whether he should accept disciples or many disciples, etc. So... Luckily, for, for, for instance, for myself, I'm in America, so not, not so many people come. <laughs> Some people come. You know. but, or I'm saying relatively. When I go to Mexico, I see like hundreds and hundreds of, of devotees waiting in line to take initiation. I see the same thing in India. I see that, I saw that in Venezuela. So many hundreds of people would come to the temple. And many of them, you know. And, but 
you know, there are other places in the world we'll see maybe there are not so many, not so many disciples of Gurudev in that particular country. But everywhere I go, I'm finding that the temples, the devotees are very nice. So, you know, there are many, many people, then we get big kirtans. And not so many people, we can still have big kirtans. Because when we go to the street, other people will join in, right? And that will attract more persons. So I don't really, I mean, I understand what you're saying. And as I said, I said kind of a, in a facetious way. That means a little bit, you know, a little bit funnily way or a humorous way that, you know, that, okay, where I'm at, not so many people come, and that's good for me. But in other places, more people come, and that will be good for them. But this, my, this is my idea. From America, you know, where I am at in Soquel, Juggy Mars joined the temple there. And then he, he went to, and he, then he got initiation from Srila Govinda Mars. And I'm considering that, you know, not so many people came, but one person can continue the preaching all over the world, like Jaggi Maharaj, you know. And so, but, you know, I see in other countries so many devotees there, and so many of them are qualified. And as a result of so many of them being qualified, they go on and make hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of devotees, bring them all to the lotus feet. Because that's the nature, you know. They're transmitting Gurudev's message and bringing people to Gurudev. And I like that. To me, that's a very good thing. Because, you know, why do I, why do I want to live in a society with millions and millions of asuras? There's so many millions of asuras, or maybe not asuras. Maybe many of them are innocent. Maybe some, many of them are as innocent. But many of the leaders of the world, they are asuras. They're very demoniac in their thinking. So if many people join Mahaprabhu Sankirtan movement, I'm very happy because I think at least I have some good association while I'm in a sura lok. <laughs> That's my thinking. There are many people out there that are, are very happy to, you know, without even knowing me. They're very happy to just beat me. But I'm surrounded by many devotees, and they'll keep those people from beating us. <laughs> you know, so I don't see anything wrong with having a lot of devotees. <laughs> I'm speaking in jest, you know. One more question. Yeah. Uh, Sri Govinda Maharaj was a son of Siva, and he said it's very uh, easy to please him when people do some service and he will give them initiation. While in Iskon, the rules are very strict, they compulsorily see you for service in four years or two. Then they think whether they want to give you initiation or not. The Guru they was very merciful. Maybe I, 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 there are differences. Those differences are, you know, according to, you know, one person or another has a different way of doing something. But they're all trying. They're all basically doing the same thing. That's my feeling. They're trying to spread the holy name, you know, and and Srila Sridhar He spoke about Prabhupada. He said that he gave the holy name out like it was water. So you know. You know, maybe they say six months, one year waiting, but, you know, you know, I still see that many people are receiving the holy name, many people are joining, many people, you know, so they have their way of doing, we have our own way of doing things, you know. I, I think I explained that a little bit because our conception is you come to Gurudev, do some, you know, you know, Come, come forward, meet Gurudev, do some service, and then, 
you receive the holy name from from Gurudev. We're not telling people to practice on practice chanting on Japa for six months. You know, there was one devotee who tried to make a bhakti yoga kit, and he included in his kit books and different things, and he included in his kit Japa Mala. And Srila Sridhar Maharaj said no, not to put the Japa Mala in your bhakti yoga kit, because we're not just selling a kit with some beads in it, you know. You want beads, get them from Gurudev and receive the holy name from him. He'll give you the beads. And when they asked, when they asked Srila Sridhar Maharaj, you know, that something about Tulsi or Neem or this or that, said, you got them from Gurudev, they're the finest Tulsi that you can get, you know. Not a question of the quality of what is the wood or, you know. Although, you know, we give Tulsi beads. We don't generally give Neem beads, but... Guru know. Dev used to say, my Guru gave me this bead. I'm giving it to you. And the yeah. disciple... Is yeah, he, said, he would say, yes, my Guru Dev told me to give this holy name to those who are sincere seekers. So I'm considering you are a sincere seeker. And then I'm uh, giving to you what I have received from Gurudev, and then he would quote, quote, you know, from scripture about the glories of the holy name, tell people to avoid the ten offenses, explain the ten offenses generally, or give them just a book of the ten offenses. He'd say, read this, learn what these offenses are, and then avoid them. So... You know, I think it's the same transmission. Uh, I don't know if you already covered it, but was, when somebody first comes to Krishna consciousness and they meet so many senior devotees and then they feel the desire for initiation, how do they decide who's going to be there? Who do they? Pardon me, I don't know. If huh? someone was previously initiated? No, no, no. Or? Someone new coming to Krishna consciousness, and they and they because they meet so many senior devotees, but they, they feel the desire to take initiation, but they don't know who to approach for initiation. How do they decide this is my guru? Day? They will hear and and use their own good discretion, decide. You hear, oh, this person is my Gurudev. Like that, I don't know. I don't know. When I came, there was only one person to take an issue. <laughs> I didn't have to choose among many, so I was subject to less confusion. But, I mean, when I, when I first came, you know, I met Srila Prabhupada, but I had eagerness to meet him. I had eagerness to, because I had read his books. I wanted to meet him. And when I met him, I was, you know, I felt immediately, this is my guru day. You could say, well, there was no one else. Yeah, but I wouldn't care if there were a million other people. I wouldn't care if there were thousands of others. I was feeling immediately, this is my, this is my spiritual master. I don't have to choose among many. I know who is my spiritual master. You know, you know I feel that Krishna, you know, brought me to his lotus feet. By his mercy, by his mercy, as it, Krishna brought me to his lotus feet. Brahmanda Brahmite Kona Bhagavan Jeev, Guru Krishna Prasadi Pai Bhakti Lada Bij. By the mercy of Krishna, one comes in contact with a spiritual master. 
Now, how Krishna works or what is the decision, who it will be, I'll leave that up to Krishna, you know. Krishna brings me to the lotus seat of my spiritual master. Then if I'm so indecisive, I can wait. Maybe then I'll, be, then I'll become convinced. But the, I have met persons who have spent their whole life trying to decide and never chose to get a spiritual master. And I think they are very, very unfortunate. The most unfortunate people, you know. Someone who tells you it's not necessary to have a spiritual master. I knew persons who met Prabhupada, they met Srila Sridhar Mars, they met Srila Govinda Mars, and they couldn't take initiation from any of them. They didn't feel that necessity. I feel that's very unfortunate. Now, when I met Prabhupada in Oxford Street, I went and touched his feet. Prabhupada was strict. He said, you have to do 16 rounds, Mr. Mano. I said, Mark, 16 is too much for me. Can I start with four or six? Said, All right, you start with four. I'll ask you. So he gave me, to get started, he said. Then I started eventually doing Chakmara Chakmara. I still have watched that Mara. And this when he was watching me, he said, what are you doing already? When you asked him for four, did he give you a diksha? Yeah, uh, he gave me. Okay. And eventually I got after I had, I had drifted a little bit, but then I met Govinda Maharaj and I said, Oh, Prabhupada is coming a second form for me. <laughs> now I must hold his hand all the time and not let him wait this time. I was 18, 19 and very ambitious and I was working, studying. So I used to see Prabhupada only on a weekend. And I'm being ignorant. I used to go there. Srila Govinda Mars, he went to he went to Mexico and I heard that same comment from from people who were previously dis, not previously, who were stayed within Iskon and were disciples of Srila Prabhupada and they said he is he, we see that Srila Prabhupada present, you know as Srila Govinda Maharaj, he is so much like Srila Prabhupada, he told. I mean, people who weren't even in our society stayed within ISKCON, didn't take initiation from Govinda Maharaj, but they, because they already had initiation from Srila Prabhupada, but they were of the opinion that Srila Govinda Maharaj was, you know, that Srila Govinda Maharaj is non-different, you could say. And I had some experience, I don't know, I'm not very much on the mental plane sometime, but one time I was in Navadip and they, they were reading Chaitanya Bhagwat in the morning in Bengali. And, you know, this was just some mental concoction of mine, but I, I, you know, I I could not understand the Bengali, and all of a sudden devotees there were uh, s saying, you know, they were starting to shout, Haribo, 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 you know. And, you know, actually the class was, I think, at, at the class was being read by, I, I believe it was Aranya Maharaj who was reading. You know, maybe then Krishna Shard. He was reading. But he the devotees were all shouting, Haribo, Haribo, and I didn't understand because I didn't, don't know Bengali. But from just just way they were reacting, I knew that it was the story of Chagai and Madai by their reaction. And looking, you know, at the speaker, of, at the, you know, the reader of Srimad Bhagavatam, I felt that Srila Prabhupada was present there. Why? Because he had picked up so many Jagais and Madais. So I had that mental idea of Prabhupada present there when they're reading of Nityananda Prabhu's mercy to Jagai and Madai. And I didn't understand the Bengali, 
But that's what I felt was happening there, and that's what was happening. Maybe, you know, maybe in my mind's eye I'm seeing Prabhupada. But I knew that that was the story of Jagai and Madai, and it was about Nityananda <coughs> Prabhu's mercy, and I knew what they were, I knew what was being spoken about, although I didn't understand the language. And, you know, I'm not a very good listener, but that conception I got, and I was right. That's really what was happening. So, so many persons told that, you know, that, or you told, that you thought this is the second coming of Srila Prabhupada. And I believe, you know, if we didn't have something that of, something of that impression, we would not have gone to the Sri Chaitanya Saraswat Mat. At least many of us, but we felt immediately when we went there that this is, this is what was, this is the essence, this is what is to be given. And, you know, this is what we want, what we received and want to continue receiving. And it was there in the Sri Chaitanya Saraswat Mahat. That was, that was my feeling, you know. But as I said, I'm a conditioned soul. You know, I had so many strange mental concoctions. <laughs> I had one dream. When I was coming, when I was staying at the mud, I dreamed that I was in a train. In a train, and the train stopped at a station, and all these shoes were swept out of the train onto the landing. And then I got off the train trying to retrieve some shoes. And the train went on without me. <laughs> so then after I dreamed that, I was thinking, I don't want that to happen. <laughs> I, don't want to be, uh, inter I don't want to be interested in something totally mundane so that I miss out on mercy. You know, something like that I had. It was like a, a warning. Be careful. You know, be careful. Don't, be, don't let your material attachments interfere with the flow of divinity. No. So I think it wasn't it, it wasn't uh, Vaishnav shoes. Uh, I don't know <laughs> whose shoes Vaishnav they were. Shoes. I don't know <laughs> whose shoes they were. It's just some one of these dreams that you have that are so you know like, where did that come from? That dream. It was very strange. But imagine the feeling. The train's gone off, and I'm I missed the I'm I'm here. The train went on without me. You know. So I. Yeah. And I, I, like that play yesterday was nice because, you know, one, one person, I was on the train with Prabhupada and one person came up to him and said, I believe we're all on the same train. <laughs> and and Srila Prabhupada said, said to that person, he said, but, but do you know where the train is going? If you don't, if you don't know the destination, what's the good of being on the train? <laughs> you don't know where you're going, you know, because the train has many stops. This train can stop in many places, but you have to know what the destination is. Where are you going? Just to have this vague, warm, fuzzy conception that it's all flow, it's all the divine flow. You know, you know that's not good enough. <laughs> That's not good enough, you know. Yeah, you can say, what, what's, the, what's that verse where it says, you know, you know, as they surrender to me, I reward them accordingly. Ye yatam mam prapadyante tamsta daiva bhajam yaham manashastani. What is it? Ye yatam mam prapadyante tamsta daiva bhajam yaham mama vartmana vartante manushaparta. So he says, that the Lord says, as they surrender to me, I reward them accordingly. So some fuzzy-minded person can think, yes, we're all on the same train. Because the Lord is rewarding us, you know, all in our own different ways, according to our own paths, you know. But some of those paths, I don't want to go down them at all. I don't want to... I don't want to get off at that destination that you're interested in. You know, you're interested in karma conda. I don't want to get off the train there. 
you're interested in, you know, Gyanakanda, you're interested in some impersonal conception, I don't want to get off the train there either. You know. So I want to be on the train till the destination, and Prabhupada said his comment to that person, what's the good of being on a train if you don't know where you're going? So that, to me, applies to what Maharaj was expressing with all these completely fuzzy-headed idiots who always tell you <laughs> that, you know, we're all following the same path. It's all one, you know? You know, and they go to this, this guru. This guru who hugs them and transmits, you know, mercy and saliva on their heads. <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> and they become her divine juta. <laughs> it's interesting because that juta is the word for, in, they use in Bengal, a, a plate of food that somebody eats from is called juta, but shoes are also called juta. So my, again, reference to my shoe dream. Anyway, that was, I just told you I have many concocted ideas that come out in the form of <laughs> dreams. That's why we say ceto darpana marjanam bhava mahadavagni nirvapanam shreya kairava chandrika vitaranam vidyavaru jivanam anandam bodhivardhanam pratiparam purnam ritasvaranam sarvatma snapanam Param Vijayate Shri Krishna Sankirtanam. <laughs> Sarvatma Snapanam. For all us persons with these strange thoughts and ideas and everything, concoction. Sarvatma Snapanam. A good bath. <laughs> yeah. 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 Bathing in the holy name. So that will happen today. What time? After Prashadam. Okay, after Prashadam. Very old. You want to do something else? Um, we'll discuss. <laughs> yeah, I may make a cameo. All right, now RT or what? We'll sing. Shall yeah. we sing Hari Harai or just go right into RT? Um, I think just because of the time, I'd be good to go right into RT. Okay, yeah, it's late, huh? Yeah, we don't want to make the Lord wait. End of, end of filming.